Now, uh, whereas I would say that I agree 100% with the judging of this of this show so far, um, and I want to say that in terms of the the entire Olympia for all of the divisions this year, I thought you know the judging was great. Uh, when I disagree with judging too, it's and I, I'm going to say some things that I disagreed with. I'm not saying I'm right and they're wrong. They are professional judges. They are the Olympia judges. They are the the best in the biz, and they had better seats than me. But I have opinions too, and so what I'm going to say, uh, I'm not saying I'm right and they are wrong. It's just something to think about, right? And everybody can have their own opinions of how what they saw. It's um, I try not to bring fanboyishness into it. Uh, I try to bring an informed. Um, educated opinion to my assessment of the physiques and placements. Of course, though, I got my favorites. You got yours. And undoubtedly, the judges have theirs as well. Um, But before I go into my assessment of the top five, um, which I did agree, I want to say I agreed 100% with who the judges had in the top five, but my ordering of those five might be a little bit different. Um, as it is, for the record, the actual placings are Big Rami was first, Brandon Curry was second, Phil Heath third, Hadi Chopin fourth, and William Bonick fifth. Now, at uh, pre-judging, and I'll put up the uh, the scorecard here. You can take a look for yourself. Um, the judges had Rami first, Phil Heath second, Curry third, Hottie fourth, and Bonick fifth. Uh, they had first and third place very, very closely, and there was all, actually only a one point difference between Hottie and William. The pre judging was, I would say, really exciting. It was definitely a very close show. The top five put on a phenomenal performance, all of them. Uh, everyone that came out looked, looked great. Um, I left that show, the pre judging, thinking it was a very, very close close show between Rami and Phil. Um, I wasn't sure who I had in first. I was pretty sure who the judges had in first. You can kind of tell these things as call outs are done and, and placings and positioning of, of the uh, competitors uh, unfolds in front of you. I think I had, you know, I couldn't tell who I thought was best. They were both great. Um, and I'll talk about them all both individually, but, um, yeah, it was definitely between Rami and Phil at, at the end of pre-judging. And as far as the others go, I, I also thought it was really close between William and Hottie, like the judges did. I had Brandon Curry pretty much I had solidly in third. Um, William and, and Hottie, I was back and forth between the two. I personally like William's physique better. I just like the way it flows. He's also a little more complete than Hottie. Hottie lacks forearms and just his... His shape and flow isn't quite as nice, and his muscle bellies aren't as pretty as William's. Um, but William was not as sharp as he normally is on uh, prejudging. At least he didn't seem to me to be, um, from the back especially. So I thought it was very close. Again, I still favor William uh, over Hottie, and I left that night uh, prejudging, pretty much thinking it was going to be um, probably Rami in first, Phil in second, uh, Brandon in third, William in fourth, and Hottie in fifth. Although those two I thought could flip, I also thought first and second could flip. And, you know, talking about things like forearms, um, you know, people say things like forearms and calves don't really matter uh, that much. And they they don't matter as much as things like (laughs) pectoralis majors and latissimus dorsis, but they do matter, especially when physiques are that close. When things are that close... You look for all the small things that are there or not there. And to me, that's why I think just William's a little more complete. And um, uh, yeah, I had him pretty much in fourth. And, uh, you know, at the end of prejudging, like I said, I had Brandon Curry pretty much solidly in third place. Um, I've said this before, and I mean it with like total respect. I think that this was the best Brandon Curry we've ever seen. And that might sound weird since last year he won the Olympia and this year he did not. I do think his physique was improved somewhat. Um, He was a little bit sharper this year than he was last year. He may not have been as full, but I think what he uh, lost in fullness, he more than made up with 
uh, sharpness. Uh, thought the sharpness of his physique was better this year. Uh, I've seen him. He was very close to being this good. I think in 2018 when he placed fifth actually in the, in the Olympia, and also when he won the Arnold in 2019. But I think that this was his best. The knock on Brandon is, and always has been, and probably always will be, his leg size, um, most especially his calves. Uh, calves, you know, if if his calves were ever going to be bigger, I think they would have been bigger already. You know, it's a genetic thing, and I'm sure he's worked on them every kind of way possible, but they are what they are. And um, as far as his thighs go, his, his, his quads and his hamstrings, from the side, his legs, you can't knock, right? His legs look great from the side. There's nice separation. The hamstrings hang nicely. Uh, but the sharpness from the back wasn't there in the glutes and hamstrings. And then, like I said, the calves are, are smallish. Um, while he has nice sweep to his quads, I would also say that the size is just not quite on the level of some of the top guys. Um now, I do think they've improved. I think every year uh, since he's been with Abdullah and working out at uh, Oxygen Gym, he's made slight improvements to his legs every year. And that's not to say that that's, that stopped, right? Next year, they could be a little bit better. And I'm, I totally believe that another Olympia win is not out of the question for Brandon. You know, if he did it once, he can do it again. And because we saw some people sharp this year who haven't been sharp in the past, it doesn't mean that they're going to be sharp next year uh, or the year after. Consistency is what's going to be key for all of these guys in terms of their placings and, um, and improvements need to be made right, in order to move up or to hold on to positions that you already have. Um, but yeah, I think Brandon looked great. I thought this was his, his best that I've seen. His posing was phenomenal. His transitions are great. Uh, he's very polished and he looked like a champion up on the stage. Probably uh, the most anticipated moment in recent history for the Olympia was the return of seven-time Mr. Olympia Phil Heath to the Olympia stage. It's his first competition since the 2018 Olympia when he finished second to Sean Roden. Uh, so this was highly anticipated. Um, we all know that he had multiple hernia surgeries to repair his abdomen. And I think everyone's attention was going to be on his abdomen uh, from the moment he stepped out on stage. And it was, right? That's what everyone sort of fixated on. And it's continuing to fixate on as they write things on Instagram and YouTube. Um, but I'm going to talk about his physique as a whole uh, first. And then we'll, well, I will talk about his abdomen for sure. You know, he was, he went into this whole thing sort of, in shadow mode, like Dorian Yates, right? We didn't see any progress pictures. Uh, he was a mystery coming into the show. Everyone knew he is a seven-time Mr. Olympia. He knows how to get in shape. He's got all the body parts. But we also knew that he had this multiple surgeries done, actually, to his abdomen. Um, so what did he look like? I think Phil looked pretty good. He was... It, people are talking about him being down in size. He actually wasn't down in size. Uh, he was about 243 pounds on stage. And that's about average for his body weights. He's weighed as low as about 232 back when he won his first show in, in uh, 2011. And in 2013, he was his biggest at about 248, right? So he's always been sort of in the 240s for the most part. Actually, for the most of his Olympia wins, he's weighed in the 240s. And this this body weight, 243 was pretty much his average Olympia body weight. Um, what I think we saw was not that he was down in size, but that he was a little flat. I think that perhaps they, uh, you know, were uh, concerned about carb loading too much, perhaps just to, to make sure that his stomach wasn't distended. Um, and it really was not. He controlled his stomach throughout all of the mandatory poses and quarter turns. His quarter turns were great. I think uh, when it comes to the top five in the quarter turns, I had him winning. Uh, his 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 muscle bellies are phenomenal, and uh, his shape is great, and he controlled his midsection throughout. Now, he did relax the midsection and transitions, especially as the evening went on, and uh, more so perhaps in finals, but I'm talking about prejudging right now. Um, 
so yes, he did relax it at times. And I think that if that was anybody else, no one would really care, right? Because this has happened to many bodybuilders in the past, but this is Phil Heath, who has had the stomach issues, and so the tension was 100% on his midsection. And you know, I think when it comes to Phil, it's in, and to any of the greats, right? You're not just compared to the guys on stage with you, you're also compared to your former best. And, uh, you know, 2011, 2013, he didn't have any stomach issues because the hernias were not bad. Uh, now he's had the hernias, he had them repaired. And so, yes, when he does transition sometimes uh, or, or relax in between poses, the midsection does protrude a little. But it was not that bad, honestly, uh, in my personal opinion. Um, was it his best no, I don't think it was his best. And I don't think that he would say that that was his best. But I do think it was pretty damn good. And um, yeah, I would say that if in, during pre-judging, when it came to the mandatories, not only did I think he was great in the, the quarter turns, and I possibly would have given him uh, those, the quarter turns to fill. Um, I'd definitely give him the two back shots. Um, he was very hard to beat in the, both those especially the back double bicep. His back double bicep is still the best in the sport today. Um, his side shots were great. He controlled his midsection throughout uh, the side tricep, the side chest. was phenomenal. Uh, Big Rami in the side chest, and side, his side shots, what made Rami impressive in the side shots is his legs. His side leg is just crazy. Um, so, yeah, I thought those side shots, it was close between Phil and 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 Rami uh, when it comes to the front shots front double bicep you know yes you can see the scarring on Phil's abdomen but his physique looked phenomenal uh, in the front double bicep and Rami though he looks great in the front double bicep his proportions aren't amazing right his his quads kind of throw things off um, the size is just cartoonish and and not necessarily in a great way when it comes to um, his front shots his front lat spread, yes, he probably took front lat spread from Phil. Um, he's got the width there. Um, yeah, most muscular. Abs and thighs. Abs and thighs, I would say probably Rami, but it wasn't a blowout. If you look at Rami's midsection, his abs are a little funky too. His abs um, are a little, take a good look. The one side, those abs are short. The other side, they're longer. He's had um, hernia surgery himself, I believe. And... Uh, Although he controls it very well, especially for a guy his, his size, 290 pounds. He's a fucking freak. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's an amazing specimen. I would say that abs and thighs I would probably give to, to Rami. But the most muscular pose I still give to Phil. So it was very close, very close between the two um, at, at pre-judging. 